welcome everyone back to another video. Today I am in a less known game. It's, it's a sandbox physics based game and it's called The Powder Toy. And it's just going to be a small tutorial on this game because I will be making more videos on it in the future. If any of you want to play, that's why I'm doing this tutorial. So, you will see the credits there when you first load into the game. And first, you will have dust equipped here. Left mouse button will make the dust, and scrolling, or the open and close bracket, will change the size of your brush. Other things, such as tab, will change the shape, the shape of your brush. Holding shift will make a line, drag and click, left or right mouse button will delete things, though if you press right mouse button on something else, you can select that, such as snow, which I have here, which will melt if it touches something warmer, like dust, but I'm just going to keep it on erase particles. Holding control will make a square of that thing that you have selected. And holding control and shift will have a fill mode. You can see some of the controls in the main credit screen there. Z will make a zoom in the little magnifier. And if you click while holding the zoom, you can place things in the magnification box. S will save something, so it's basically like a permanent copy. So if I can save it. And then if I press L, I can load it. Then Control C and Control V will do the same thing. It's just temporary. So yeah. Uh, what else is here? Um, Control Z undo. Control Y redo. And those are the basic controls. Then there's camera modes like alternative velocity dis velocity display, the alternative way of displaying moving air. One would be the normal one. Zero is alternative. Pressure display. Display shows well pressure. Red is pressure, and the blue is the negative pressure. Three is persistent display. It's pretty self-explanatory, really. Four is fire display, which is, has some special effects like fire will glow, and but water and liquids don't have a blur. Five is blob display, everything is just, well, a blob. Six is heat display, shows the heat of things, such as, for example, this element called glow, which is just, well, the description, is a, bl a blue, because it's at room temperature, actually just above, but liquid nitrogen is a very dark blue, because it's, well, very cold, and lava, is a green because it's kind of hot. And then something even hotter like plasma is pink. Seven is fancy display. It's like fire display, except it also has a blur for water and a kind of a gas effect for things like neutrons and photons, which are just basic particles. Eight is nothing display. Absolutely nothing special. And 9 is heat gradient display, which if I were to just get something, a big block of brick, and if I were to get this heat tool, which heats the targeted element, you can see the heat moving throughout the block of brick. I would recommend fancy display, unless you have a bad computer. Otherwise, all the other elements here are pretty self-explanatory. I'll just say what I need to say for the things that don't seem self-explanatory. So, gravitons, Newtonian gravity is a form of gravity that isn't natural gravity in this game. In the game, there's two forms of gravity, Newtonian and natural. Natural just pulls things to the ground naturally, but Newtonian, if I were to get some of these gravitons, were to pull things to them unnaturally. So, for example, with natural gravity, Neutrons just go everywhere. They don't go down like everything else. But they get sucked in by their Newtonian gravity. So these neutrons come flying in. 
Same with photons and all the other particles. Other things to that might not be self-explanatory, really, is exotic matter. Here, let me get a ball of titanium. It blocks all air pressure in the titanium. Description means that if you were to go into pressure display, it makes some pressure in here. The pressure can't escape from the box. So if I were to get some uh, exotic matter. So exposed to explodes when it has excess exposure to neutrons. It's, for, it's pretty explodey, really. So it's, if you just bombard it with thousands of neutrons, it just turns all rainbowy and explodes with this thing called the warp. Warp is pretty strange, but it's basically, well, warps things. Just displaces them and mixes them with the air. Other things you might want to mention about this is it will change colors, like in heat display, the hotter it gets. And one thing you might want to mention is holding a heat tool or pressure tool over something heats it well normally but if you move it around it heats it a lot faster and if you hold shift it heats it faster too and cyclone might look normal but if you go into pressure display it just looks like well empty pressure but if you're going to in velocity display it is making a cyclone so well yeah, cyclone makes a cyclone. Wind, might want to mention that it does create air movement like normal, but if you hold shift, well, if you hold shift to make a line of it, it will make a constant stream of wind. So, the fan in the walls is basically just the same thing, but permanent. Permanent, and you have to hold shift with fan selected, and clicking on fan to in order to change its direction. What well, walls are exactly are indestructible things with different properties. Like a normal wall, nothing can go through it besides electrodes for some reason. I'll get to all these for some in a bit. And lightning can go through it, I believe. Yes, lightning can go through it. Otherwise, nothing else can, and it's basically invincible. This just removes walls. This is the same as wall, but you can it's conductive, so if you were to get two balls of iron at the end, it's basically an instant indestructible wire. Other walls that might not make sense as this. It will erase walls, particles, because walls and particles are not the same. Walls have a different grid than a particle does. And signs, which are in here in the tools, you can click it. Just type anything you want. Here. That's just a sign, but you can't remove it normally. So you have to use... You have to either click on it again with the sign to press delete, or you can use this, which will remove everything. It also is in the 2 or 4x4 four four grid, just like these ones. Uh, nothing else that seems pretty in particular, besides E-hole, which is really, really weird, because everything gets absorbed inside of it, as it says, but everything can also go inside of each other. And it just acts like a void at the end. So if you were to have a bunch of gravity pointing to the center, you could have a billion photons in one spot without turning it into a black hole. So, if you have enough things, it will turn into a black hole eventually. Right, other things in here. Electronics, yeah. Electronics, ray emitter. C-ray, which is pretty advanced. And I don't even know how to use the wild wire world wires yet. I have no clue. But, and the D-ray here are all pretty strange, but pretty alike. So, for the array, with if you put P 
P-type silicon below it, it will shoot a small, short beam when sparked. You can see it shoots pretty fast. Oh, another thing to mention, if you press F, it will move one frame at a time. So you can do like slow motion. It doesn't kind of hurt your hand though. But, if you were to use anything else that's conductive, it makes a solid white beam. With the solid white beam, if you were to put a filter over it, just like here, the white beam will turn blue, or if you were to heat it up to be red, it would, well, be red. If you were to heat up the array with either one of the P-type silicon or normal metal things, the array will also be that temperature, so you can make, like, lasers that would destroy things. For example, this would melt the metal after a certain amount of time. But if you are going to make one of those, it's recommended to use P-type silicon, because it shoots faster, but still does the same amount of heat transfer. One thing I forgot to mention, with normal metals, or any conductive besides P-type silicon, the metal will, con the beam will conduct to other metals. But over time, this metal block here will heat up, and eventually melt. But, so with D-Ray, it's basically the same. Still not exactly sure how it's used, because I haven't used it much. But, if I were to put a line of insulation, which blocks all conductivity, and heat, it would copy that. And just keep on copying it, and copying it, and copying it, and copying it, and copying it. Until it just reaches the end of the world. I know one thing you can do with it is if you were to surround the D-Ray with silicon, P-type silicon, because it only works with that, and surround that with more D-Ray, and just do that for basically ever, you can make a bomb of sorts that can destroy nearly anything. This one's pretty not laid out correctly, so it just makes these beams. But, if I were to grab one of the... Here's are all my saves. If you press K, you can see all of your saves that you've ever made. For example, here's a fusion bomb I made a while ago. If I were to remove this, press this little folder in the bottom right to remove everything. Press K to see all your saves. Here's one of the bombs I made, but this one includes EMP which I'll show you that in a bit, but it can destroy anything that is on screen. So EMP is an EMP. It destroys a lot of electronic things. It will turn yellow as a cooldown, and it would usually make a blue flash around the screen, but I'm not seeing that for some reason. There it is. Short blue flash. The more EMPs, the bigger the flash and stuff. But, if I were to get some P, some electronic stuff like P-type silicon, array, C-ray, and Wi-Fi, it would all, well, it's supposed to break them. But, this is just about how I'm going to have to wrap this up. Oh. Show you C-Ray, basically the same. Click on it with something, I'll just do battery. With P-type silicon behind it, it will replace anything here with air so it can, well, make that. So it replaces things with it, with normal metal. It will... Just make it, but if there's something in the way, it will block it. Same goal. This is in the way. Remove, please. It won't go through. And that's pretty much it for today. Hope everyone has a fantastic morning, and see you later.